Hi, my name's Ian Seiferling. I'm CEO and co-founder of Adaviv. We're a precision agriculture uh, platform for controlled environment farms. Um, looking to use our machine vision, AI technology to help them essentially be more profitable by lowering input costs and automating uh, much of the tedious tasks that happen in, in, uh, in the cultivation. Sure, well, I suppose the you know, company st uh, started um, you know, back, back with my roots. Um, I grew up in Saskatchewan in Canada, uh, farming uh, province. So you know, every family had a, had a farm uh, in it at some point. And um, so I just grew a really strong connection to, to agriculture, to, to nature. Followed that through my PhD um, in environmental sciences and biology. And ended up at MIT during my PhD. Uh, I was lucky to have that opportunity and, and stayed on for a couple of years as well as a postdoc. There I was researching uh, urban agriculture, looking at how scalable it is um, uh, to grow food in and around cities. And you know, one of the great things about working in an applied university in a lab like the Sensible City Lab where I was, was I got to work with, with many brilliant people from across disciplines from biology to uh, math to AI to physics to design. I met my co-founder Mo there, we worked together uh, as postdoc researchers and uh, it was then that we you know, got this um, passion for entrepreneurship that MIT helped support. Um, from my work in plant science, um, I knew that these powerful new technologies like AI, machine vision, data science, um, we're really ripe and ready to help, uh, help how we uh, optimize how we grow, grow crops in controlled environments, um, essentially by giving us the ability to collect plant level data, which allows us to close the loop between the plants and the, the control systems and the, the farming systems and the inputs, um, and, and really understand those feedback um, and run a much more lean, um, optimized, uh, essentially a uh, production system, which a, which a farm really is. Um, so, so we worked together on that, leveraging our experiences, Mo's as an AI scientist, and we quickly met Julian, my other co-founder, who was uh, completing his MBA at Sloan MIT. And um, he really brought uh, a lot of experience uh, working with McKinsey um, in lean manufacturing and we really felt that was a really important piece to what we're building in this platform to be able to connect the data to actual uh, value creation in terms of lean efficiencies, lean workflows, and really put that data, plant level data into action to help farms both get higher yields but do it with less costs and less inputs. So again, we work with controlled environment farms. So these are greenhouses, indoor farms. They have, you know, the ability to bring more control to so optimize water inputs um, energy but these farms are still traditionally um, run with a lot of subjective decision making and um, are still relying on you know people's ability to get into the field and under look at the plants um, look at the condition um, uh, detect pest disease pathogens um, by by human eye and and that's really tough um, because the scale of these farms is massive labor is expensive so basically they lack a lot of visibility over what's happening in the farm especially the managers or the cultivators that have all that expert growing knowledge they don't have the time they don't have the bandwidth to be uh, in the field to be um, giving you know personal care, so to speak, to every plant. Um, and still a lot of this is done, communication, decision making on pen and paper. Um, and so what we're doing is quantifying better that plant level data, and we're detecting issues um, much, much earlier and at larger scales than, than they can do um, with traditional methods. We do that by using machine vision to collect that plant level data detect pest disease pathogens, but also measure the growth of the plant and indicators that the growers can use to make better crop planning decisions um, and to evaluate what their team is doing in the field. So what we do is A, collect plant level data, 
use AI to turn uh, those images into key metrics and detect issues much, much earlier. Um, you know, uh, we detect seven to ten times more issues than they typically would capture with traditional human methods. We automate that scouting and um, we help them quantify um, uh, plant growth that, that helps them inform like yield uh, predictions and define their how they're going to optimize or plant the crop or <clears throat> excuse me help them optimize their growing recipes essentially um, because we are collecting that data that tells us how the plant you know this, the plant signals telling us what the plant is uh, wanting and needing and reacting to the environment so we help them bring that together in one single platform and um, that's why we call it a lean cultivation platform because it's not just about machine vision, it's not just about data, it's about turning that data into workflows that help the team execute better, reduce waste. Um, so at the end of the day, we're helping them increase the yields but also doing it with less input costs. I think, um, you know, what I, what I mentioned earlier that sometimes, you know, we are able to identify these these patterns and trends that um, get lost in the complexities of the day-to-day -day or get lost in the complexities of running multiple crops at the same time. Um, and that is, you know, trends where um, we see certain pest or disease issues start and spread. We can often trace those uh, spatial patterns back to where they came from. Did they come from a certain area of the farm? Um, and so those insights are, are super valuable because they, they're, they're more or less invisible to the, to the, the managers um, because they're, you know, they don't have that oversight over the farm. So identifying spatial patterns is one. Identifying temporal patterns um, is their you know, seasonality to, to the issues they're facing. How can they use that information to plan the next crop better? If we know that we're in a season of, um, you know, where pathogens are, are extremely high, um, where we have maybe a section of the farm that is prone to high humidity and pathogens that we've identified, they can then grow only cultivars that are maybe more resistant to that pathogen in that section. And so that they're optimizing what they grow to get the most out of, out of those plants. Um, so that's one, identifying those kind of invisible spatial and temporal uh, trends. The other is, you know, sometimes I think, you know, often growers um, find it hard to quantify how much they're spending on inputs and quantify uh, how much um, certain tasks are taking. So um, some farms or some crops, they do a culling process, so early in the in the cycle of the plant, whether that's a clone or whether that's a germinate, they want to identify plants that are growing, that are performing well, and plants that are not performing well, so that they can remove those from the from the crop when they move to the vegetative and the and the fruit producing stage. They're optimizing those best performing plants, so it's an optimization, and it's extremely labor intensive, and they often don't know are they spending too much time and um, which they, uh, are they really using data-driven or quantitative metrics to understand what, what is a poor-performing plant and what is a high-performing. We give them quantitative data on that so that it's, it, you know, it, it, it goes from subjective to objective and um, we can automatically detect the, say, the 10% plants that are not growing at the same pace and make that process go from an hour long process to you know minutes and, and do it much more accurately. We're constantly innovating, constantly developing uh, additional features. This technology is, is very flexible in that manner. Um, I, I would say you know three things we're, we're very excited and focused on right now. One is thermal imaging. Uh, two is uh, additional automation and three is partnerships. So with thermal imaging, you know, traditionally that type of sensing is very expensive and hard to do at, at scale in the field. Uh, maybe in a lab setting it, it works, but um, you know, 
we're now, we have now deployed very, very um, high resolution thermal imaging into our crop scanning system. And that gives us the ability to see plant stress, to see plant performance indicators and metrics that are completely invisible to the human eye. So we can understand when a plant is stressed days before a human could ever detect if it's got an issue like a fungus or a, or a, a, a bug like a aphids. Um, and that, that's a game changer really because the earlier you can detect uh, uh, crop issues, um, of course the better and you're able to prevent the spread. Um, often if you see it too late, it's already spreading, the populations are growing and it's very hard to get under control. So we've already had quick wins there. It also helps us understand when is the plant working. We can tell when it's transpiring, when it's not, and the growers can use that information to optimize their environment and their growing recipes so that the plant is working when they want it to work and it's kind of resting when they want it to rest. Um, the others I mentioned, partnerships and automation. Um, partnerships are key in agriculture, right? Um, it's today still very fragmented in terms of the technology space. And um, we're unique, I think, because we generate this plant level data, this fundamental unit of the production system. And a lot of other players in the space, the, the traditional leaders in the market in the lighting, in irrigation and nutrients, in greenhouse supplies and design, they're all, you know, asking and wanting more, more data to, to drive more actuation and automation in their systems. So how can we fine tune or light recipes? Well, we need to know how the plant responds and be able to create those quick feedback cycles. And so um, we're talking to a lot of these leaders now in the industry because we can provide that, that information and that, that intelligence layer that they're all seeking. And then lastly is automation. Um, you know, what we've built today, um, we've shown a lot of wins, increased yield, reduced labor, um, uh, more efficiency in the cultivation team. But we want to increase the automation and we want to work with more players in that space too, right? Like agricultural robotics is a very quickly growing uh, sector. And um, there's multiple tasks that, that AI robotics technology are performing right now and we want to see those come together. So, you know, we want to leverage our plant intelligence platform to, to integrate with, you know, perhaps a harvesting robot, for example, to, to provide a more full solution, um, full automation uh, in terms of automating those, those kind of manual tasks.